Hey guys and girls, Jason here from MusicSoftwareTraining.com and I want to welcome you to the Music Habits Podcast where I give you bite-sized music production insights that you can apply to your music making approach immediately. So although I'm an Ableton trainer and coach, the information is meant to be applied to anything you use to record. So it's definitely not uh, digital audio workstation specific. So with that said, to kick off this first podcast, I'm going to tell you 10 things nobody tells music producers that could save you years or even decades in confusion and frustration. So let's go ahead and get started. So if you're new to music production, or even if you've been poking around for a while, there are a number of things that you haven't been told about music making. Depending on what angle you are taking to get into the music production game, you're likely either over-preparing or under-preparing for what lies ahead for you. Sadly, many suffer from what they consider to be complete failure, and thus they, they give up before they've really even started. So it's my belief that if they had this information ahead of time, they probably would have the power to move through the rough spots. So the following are 10 things I certainly wish I had known when I started, or even 10 years in. Number one, your first attempts at making music won't be great. And that's just the way it should be. So one of the biggest mistakes an aspiring producer can make is to think their next song is going to be the song that only not only changes their lives, but changes music history. Unfortunately, these are the high expectations and pressure they put on themselves, and this is the reason they never finish anything. See, nothing you make the first time around can compete with the producers who've churned out hundreds or even thousands of songs. If you sit there for a year or more struggling with making your first song the hit of the century, you're missing the opportunity that creating many imperfect songs can bring you. The truth is that you need to finish a good 10 to 20 songs before you start to find your own groove. This might seem daunting for the perfectionist, but if you can put aside perfection and just call a project done when you've reached the tip of your current skill level, you'll find yourself improving at dramatically faster rates. Plus, as your production and listening skills get better, you can always go back and revisit the old songs for improvements that will seem obvious to you after you've made, you know, 10 or 20 tunes. Number two, nobody creates in a constant peak state. Peak states of consciousness, also called flow, is considered to be the most desirable state that being a human can experience. Extreme athletes and adventurists don't risk their lives because they're crazy. It's because being on the edge is the only way to create these flow states and no one can experience these states constantly. And when I say nobody, I mean it. The reason for this is that peak states of creativity follow a pattern which involves lulls and frustration. So it's two sides of the same coin, and you simply can't have one without the other. If you aren't putting yourself at the edge of your capabilities and risking failure, your level of focus simply won't be intense enough to put you into this peak state of mind. If you are a multitasker or tend to surround yourself with distractions, you'll have no chance of reaching the state. Peak creativity states make the whole world fade away and you experience kind of a now moment in a way that can't really be explained unless you've been there. The great artists have taught themselves how to get into the state more often than others, but still understand that 90% of the time, all artists have to push themselves to do the work regardless of how they feel. When you get interrupted in the middle of creating, even if you're not in a peak, state, you're kind of building up a, a flow for yourself. And when that is interrupted, you'll find it, it can take you 20, 30 minutes just to get back to where you were, just from simple interruption. Regardless, that's going to happen and you can't really avoid it. You certainly can uh, put a do not disturb on your door, shut down the internet and, you know, really focus. But regardless of if you get interrupted or not, the show must go on and you can't just wait for the right time to create. So just remember peak states only come to those who are willing to do the work regardless of how they feel. Number three, most of what you think you need to know doesn't really matter. So many artists have this belief that they can't start making music with what they know right now. Because of this fear of creating, they over-prepare and they end up wasting hundreds of hours watching every tutorial, outlining tips for every style of music and diving deep into music theory. What they don't realize is that most of this information will fall right back out of your head and never make it into your toolbox. On top of that, 
they're getting so many opposing pieces of information that all this information causes more confusion than it does benefits. As a rule, a new producer should be spending 80% of their time making music with the knowledge they have, and only 20% of the time, at most, spent learning new techniques. I recommend you take your own skills as far as they can possibly go, and only then do you search out tutorials that will get you over that creative hump so you can reach the next level in your music making. This is the only way you will retain what you've learned, as well as the only way you will keep yourself focused on actually making music. So don't get yourself caught up in the information trap for the wrong reasons. Number four, most of the tools that you think you need, you don't. Many producers, new and old, join groups and forums related to their musical style or their digital, digital audio workstation of choice. I believe it's smart to interact with like-minded people, but be warned, the time people are spending in these forums is time they probably should be making great music. This lack of focus on actually working on your music can become addictive as everyone in the group lets everyone else off the hook. Then you have the know-it-alls, and these are the people who are pissed off that their amazing talents haven't boosted them into the stratosphere of fame and glory. These people are better than you, and they want you to know it. They might be the guys that are like, oh, are you using that compression? That thing sounds like dog shit. If you're not using XYZ plugin or this piece of hardware, you might as well pack it in. So pretty soon you're spending all of your songwriting time searching other forums discussing a hundred different points of view on what compressor you need to be taken seriously by your peers. So my suggestion is just to stop that completely. Yeah, there are some amazing plugins out there, but the truth is if you learn how to use a certain tool inside and out, you can usually get the same results. I personally use mostly internal plugins for my digital audio workstation of choice, which is Ableton. I've heard many people tell me logic effects are better, and although I wouldn't disagree, I found a way to get the job done quickly and efficiently with the tools I have so far. And the type of plugins I use has not affected getting my track signed or re reaching the charts one single bit. So at the end of the day, the person that finishes the most songs wins every time. So put your focus on that, at least for right now, and as you go, Obviously, you will find your preferences and be able to use that, but there's no tool that you're going to use that's going to ruin the possibility of turning out a great track as long as you learn how to use the tool correctly. Number five, your habits count more than your knowledge. So once again, you need to stop thinking you need to know everything. I've personally gone that route, and in the past, I was able to teach people how to use music software inside and out and they would take a few chosen gems and run with them while disregarding much of the information they didn't need right now. Good on them because they were finishing music, and at the time, I wasn't, so lesson learned. If you want to be a successful songwriter or producer, you should first concentrate on your habits before your knowledge. If you haven't instilled the habits that will force you to work on music daily, your knowledge really is not gonna matter. Frankly, it's a bit stupid to keep adding tools to your already oversized toolbox if you're never going to sit your ass down and use them. You'll get far more benefit by creating the habit of sitting in front of your digital audio workstation of choice for 15 minutes a day, even if you don't write a thing, than you will from force feeding your brain with more quote unquote knowledge. If you ever want to create a creative flow, it comes from clearing your mind, not stuffing it like that closet that you don't show any of your guests. So focus on those habits before focusing on all the information that you think you need to know. Number six, Everything you want comes through people. People are more important than knowledge. Look around at all those highly successful people. Are they all there because they're geniuses? Not a chance. Everything you want outside your personal spiritual growth is going to require relationships. You simply can't stay locked out from the world making great music and expect that to be enough. You're going to have to interact, communicate, and share your value and trade for the value of others. If you think you're above promoting yourself, in the most ethical way, of course, and sharing you with the world, the world will never have the opportunity to appreciate who you are and what it is that you do so well. Anyone who tells you otherwise is lying to you, trust me. Number seven, you don't have to be miserable to make good music. I wish I would have learned this a long time ago because it would have saved me a whole lot of self-destructive behavior. You don't need to fabricate a difficult, dark, and addictive lifestyle to be great. I'm not saying that getting out of your head once in a while can't be beneficial. 
I mean, it's not popular to say this, but sometimes the drugs do work, at least for a little bit. Gladly I did my share and got out of it before doing myself too much permanent damage. I can reflect on those experiences from a sober state of mind and say with complete conviction that I'm 10 times more productive as a sober person who has the occasional beer or glass of wine. So don't follow your fellow musicians down the rabbit hole too far or you will fuck yourself, your creativity, and your productivity. My advice to you is have experiences and make music, but always give your music top priority. The lifestyle is largely bullshit anyway, so don't believe the hype. Number eight. Musicianship is optional in this game. I've spoken out many times of my happiness in being a non-musician, or at least my happiness in not letting it get in the way of creating things I'm proud of. So many songwriters are not the best musicians, and many of the best electronic artists don't have a very big musical background. And many of those who do have found it a hindrance in creating outside the box at times. A non-musician does not have to have a total lack of talent. It's just coming from a, another angle. The man who I consider to be the greatest engineer and one of the most celebrated artists is Brian Eno. All the music theory in the world wouldn't put me at his level of talent. He's responsible for some of the best works from David Bowie, U2, David Byrne of Talking Heads, Coldplay, James, Devo, and of course his incredible work with Roxy Music. If you're not familiar with Brian Eno, look him up. He's been highly influential in the music scene. For all of the incredible music he's responsible for, he still considers himself a crap musician. Now look, if you have a music background, great, use it. If you don't, also great, create from a different angle. You'll never know your capabilities unless you embrace where you're at right now. Number nine, time is the only difference from you and those who are now successful. Your musical heroes are not really heroes. They are arrows pointing in the direction of your own potential. Don't allow the thought that some have it and some don't. It's simply not true. The truth is that some people work for it tirelessly and consistently until they get it. Some of the best artists actually took longer to get there than you would expect. If you want to know whether you've got it in you or not, look at your daily habits, not your skill level. This is where your true potential is going to lie. And number 10, everybody steals. So many people are so fucking paranoid that they just sit there staring at their computer screen. It's kind of like me wandering aimlessly in a supermarket trying to put a meal together. If I couldn't steal recipes from people much more gifted in cooking than me, I'd be in even more trouble and I'd probably starve or eat really shitty food. So the truth is that all the music that you hear is inspired by another musician, artist, poet, or some abstract thing someone recognized as having beauty that others might not have seen from that perspective. And that idea that you're afraid to borrow is almost certainly inspired by someone else, if not completely stolen. Picasso, John Lennon, and Steve Jobs, all considered to be creative innovators, are all famously quoted for nicking ideas pretty blatantly. Think of a band like Led Zeppelin. You think they were innovators? I did too, but and I, I still love them, but if you do your research, I'm sure you'll be pretty shocked at how much theft actually happened within their career. See, stealing ideas is how artists constantly fuel their own creativity. Letting go of the fear of being completely original will actually set you free and make you more creative, not less creative. So I say use samples, presets, loops, quotes, or even steal from your own past ideas. Nothing you can steal will be put back together quite like the source you got it from. See, we are all human filters. This means that no matter what we borrow or steal, it still has to run through our unique set of parameters before it gets spit back out as our own art. So drop the fear and use everything around you when you create. I think you'll find it very liberating. So that concludes the first podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got your little bite-sized piece of information that you could put to use right away. Also, if you like what you heard today, make sure to pick up my new book, Music Habits, The Mental Game of Electronic Music Production. You can find it now on Amazon. There's a link below the video, or you can just search it in your surely going to find it. So stay tuned for more of these soon.